All right, guys, this video is going to show you how you can set up a car in Maya. Let's go through all the controls real quick and I'll show you what it can do. So we have this root control, pretty standard stuff, allows you to move it wherever you want to move it. Uh, we have a body control. Now this provides all of the suspension that we need. So we've got the up and down motion and we can rotate it as well, provide a little bit more bouncy motion. We've got individual wheel suspension as well. And this is great for attaching our wheels to a bumpy terrain using a geometry constraint. We have rear axis controls for hitting the brakes and skidding. Uh, we also have the same thing for the front. We also have a drive control. Now this is what all the wheels are connected to. So very similar to the tank, actually uses the exact same expression. So if I move this drive control, you can see all the wheels are interacting. Get a little bit closer there. And if we rotate that, doesn't matter where we move this car, the wheels are going to interact correctly. Let's reset that. We also have these other attributes on this drive control. We have steering. Now this is pretty cool because it interacts with that expression as well. And you'll see that some distance is covered on the wheels and it provides some additional rotation, which is very cool. It's a pretty realistic effect for steering. We also have some front wheel spin and some rear wheel spin. This, that's just additive to the drive. We also have these adjustment controls. Now these are what really set this rig apart because you can use these to adjust the entire rig to fit pretty much any four-wheeled vehicle. So I'll show you what I mean here. We can adjust the width. Obviously if you've got a wider car. If you've got something like a stretch limo, you can just adjust the length until your wheels match up. Go smaller if you need to. We also have a steer radius. Now what this is, is the distance between the pivot point of our steering here and the center outermost point of the wheel. If we increase that, say we have something like a racing car where the, the wheels are a little bit further away from the steering, uh, you can still have the, the proper math applied to those wheels. Because if you just moved it out on its own without adjusting the math, the wheels wouldn't rotate correctly. So that's what that's there for. We also have our wheel radius. Now this is a big one. This one you would adjust to fit the size of your actual wheels. So if they're a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, you'll notice that the chassis moves up with it and everything else moves up with it as well, the controls. So the idea is to match these display rings to the size of your wheel. So I'm gonna show you some examples here. So I have a car attached to this. So we've got everything working. We can adjust the suspension if we need to and animate it, uh, rotate it, do all the things that I just showed you. It's exactly the same rig. All that's different is this body of the Mazda 3 has been skinned to the body joint of this rig. Now if we want to go into a different size vehicle, I'm just going to grab a van model here. It's pretty crude, pretty shitty. What I did is I set some keys on these adjustment attributes to fit this van and then made some minor adjustments to the mesh to make sure that the wheels were exactly in the center of the, uh, the joint pivot points. If we move this around, you can see that everything is still going to work with it. Right, so it makes it very, very versatile and the reusability of this rig is awesome. So let's go ahead and set up this rig. So the first thing you want to do is grab this scene file. You can find this on my website. It's totally free. There's no sign up, none of that stuff. It follows the exact same format as my previous tutorials. I had a lot of positive feedback about those. So we're just going to keep going with that same format. If you've never done a tutorial of mine in the past, uh, basically uh, you grab a scene file and, and inside it is everything broken down into groups that correspond to videos. So there'll be three videos for this whole tutorial, three parts to it. And inside it are all the parts that you need. Everything's already created in there for you. None of it is actually connected. So we're gonna be going through and connecting it up together so you can understand all the crucial stuff that you need to know. All the rest of the stuff like creating joints, all that stuff, I assume you already know that. That's why we don't have to go through that part. We just wanna get through this, learn what we need to learn and have a really cool rig at the end of it. I will mention though, if you do want to bypass the entire rigging process and you just want the final connected up rig to use for your project, you can grab that on my store as well. So let's get going. We're just going to continue this video on the chassis. So let's hide part two and three. We don't need to do anything with those in this video. If we open it up, we can see all the pieces that we have here. First thing we're going to do is create our main hierarchy. So this car group here, this is going to be our main container for everything. And we also have a rig group here, which is going to contain all of our rig information and geometry is going to have all our mesh in there. So we're going to grab these two groups and we're just going to parent them to car group. 
Now all these are just placed in the center of the world, literally containers to keep everything organized. Next thing we're going to do is create some joints. Now our root joint is the first joint that we're going to deal with. And that one is right there in the center of the world. That one is going to be parented to our rig group, and that's going to be the start of our main skeleton. Uh, next joint we have is the chassis joint. Now this is going to be in the exact same spot as the root joint, but you're going to move it up 35 units. And this is going to be the exact value that we're going to be using for the default radius of the wheels. So that's not an accident that that's set up at 35 there. So we're going to parent that one to our root joint. The next thing we're going to do is create four more joints. And now these are going to be our width joints. And these are our main resizing joints. Now they're also going to be set at 35 units high, but they are going to be in line with our wheels. So if I just unhide the wheels real quick, these ones here are going to be positioned directly in the center of our wheel. And they're going to be moved in a little bit, something like 20. Doesn't have to be exact, but I just wanted a nice round number so we can easily connect this to attributes and uh, resize it. So we're just going to hide the wheels. So you can just grab those joints and parent those to the chassis joint, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to skin our chassis tutorial mesh here to these joints. So we're going to grab all of our width joints, our chassis and our chassis mesh. And we're just going to go up to rigging, skin, bind skin. I'm just going to apply, grab the component editor right here. This is probably the quickest way to skin these. So we're going to go to the smooth skin tab. We're going to go to our vertex selection here of everything in this corner right here. And we're going to set those. This is the right side. This is the left and this is the front. So we're going to be dealing with the front right here. So we're going to grab our right front width. We're going to set all of these and you stretch this down a little bit. We set all of these to one. And we're going to grab all of these, and this is the front left. We set all of those to one. This one here is our right rear. We set those to one, and then we're going to grab all of these and set those to our left rear. All right, we can close that now. We don't need that. Now to test it, we're just going to move some of these joints around to make sure it's all working. That's great. So when we resize these, this is what's. Uh, going to be adjusted here these joints okay so that looks good next thing we're going to do is parent our chassis to our geometry group All right so we can move that in there don't need that anymore then we're going to create a root control i just used a uh, nerve circle and played with the, the points to get a different shape this is going to be our main control and this is going to be parented to our rig group and then you want to grab that root control and then your root joint. And then we're going to constrain that with a parent constraint. And we, it doesn't matter about maintain offset because it's in the same spot. You want to make sure that control is zeroed out as well and the pivot is in the center of the world. I'm just going to hit apply. Now when we move this around, it should move everything. All right, great. Next thing you want to do is create a drive control. Now this is just a nerves curve arrow with the center placed in the center of the world, just like the root exactly the same spot as the root. And we've also created some attributes on this. First three here, steering, front wheel spin, and rear wheel spin. These are animatable. We're gonna be actually be keying these when we animate the, the entire car later on. Uh, the rest of these, these two, steer drive and wheel drive, are to do with the expression. And these ones here are all adjustable. So once you've adjusted it to fit your car, you'll never really need to use these. You just lock them so you don't get any animation data on those. Now all of these are created as float attributes. If you're creating your own, you can go to modify, add attribute, and just set this to float and just add them all in manually if you want to do that. The only one that's not is this one right here, rig adjust, this one here. This is just an enum, kind of set it to enum. You can remove blue here. I, I just typed in adjust and rig, added that, and then just locked it. And that just serves as a divider to separate the animatable attributes from the others. We'll be connecting those up shortly. But let's move on to the rest of the controls here. So we've got our drive control created and we're going to make sure the transforms are all frozen on there. The pivot is in the center of the world. And we're going to parent that to our root control. Next thing we want to do is create our front axis control, which is this one right here. This is just a NURB circle kind of modified, but you can just use a circle if you want to, not a big deal. This is frozen in place directly under your wheels. So it's like on the ground, in line with your wheels and centered. That's all that is. And the same thing for this rear one as well. 
that's done exactly the same way. So it's frozen right on the ground in between these two joints essentially. So it's in line with the wheels. So that's where those are positioned. Our front axis control gets parented to our drive control. Again, make sure the pivot point of that control is directly on the ground and in line with our wheels. Same with the pivot on the rear axis. And the next one that we need to parent in here is this rear axis control, but we need to be able to move it manually with our adjustment attributes. So we need a separate node to kind of take that motion for us. So we've created a rear axis reset node here. All that is is just an empty group positioned in the exact same spot as our rear axis control. So we can parent our rear axis control to that reset and then parent our reset node to the front axis control. So the hierarchy should look like this. Last thing we need to create is our body control, which is our main suspension control. So you've got some up and down and we want to be able to rotate it this way. So I've gone ahead and just locked those. These are the only attributes that we're going to be animating. I just hid and locked the rest of the attributes that we don't need. So again, we need a body reset for this one. Now these ones are placed in the exact same position as the chassis joint. So you just want to make sure those pivots are set up in that position right there. And we're going to parent our body control to the body reset and we're gonna parent that body reset to our rear axis control. So the whole hierarchy should look like this. We can go ahead and delete part one chassis. We don't need that one anymore. And then we're gonna go ahead and link all this stuff up. Our chassis joint, we're gonna connect that to our radius so it can move up and down when we adjust our wheel radius. So let's grab a connection editor because it's a very quick connection. I like to use that for the real quick ones. We're gonna be using our drive control to drive it. We're gonna be scrolling down to our wheel radius attribute right at the bottom then grabbing our chassis joint, reload that one on the right here. And we're just gonna go down to our translate Y and connect that up. So now when we adjust our wheel radius, we have that joint moving up and down. Our next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our rear axis reset. We're gonna put that in here and we wanna drive that with our length adjust. This should be already at zero and our attributes at zero. That works out perfect. So we can grab our length adjust we're going to connect that to the rear axis reset translate Z. So when we adjust our length, we can shift that back and forth, right? All right, now that we've got that connected, we want to constrain our chassis joint here to our rear axis control. So we're going to grab rear axis control and our chassis joint. We go constrain parent. And because we're already using translate Y here, we're just gonna take off all and just put X and Z for our translate. We're gonna hit apply. Now when we move this around and rotate it, we get the whole car doing the skid, which is what we want. Now if we adjust our length, we can see that everything's moving back correctly. We just need to now lock the front half in place so that it stretches. So we're gonna do that in the node editor. I'm gonna turn off shapes, just hit no shapes, and we're gonna select our joints here, we can add these in, and we're gonna grab our drive control, add that in, double click that one there to get all the attributes that we need. And we're gonna create some nodes. Now, usually you just create a node by right click, create node, type it in. I already have the nodes already created in here for you. So if you go to display, turn off DAG objects, you'll see them all listed here. These are all the nodes that we actually need in the scene. Uh, the first one we're gonna create here for this is the front axle adjust PMA, which is just a plus minus average node. That's all that is. We're just gonna we're just gonna add that in. There it is right there. We're gonna open that one up. And we're gonna connect our length adjust to input 1D1. And if you don't see that, uh, just connect it to 1D0 first, and then the next one will appear. And then you can just remove the first one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the value here of our translate Z, which is which is this way, which is our distance this way, because this is the way we're moving with our length. And that value is 121.403. We're gonna copy that, and we're just gonna paste that into our input 1D, which is already in there. So we're just gonna put that in right there. And that's what that is. And now we're gonna take the output 1D and plug that into the translate Z of both of our front width joints. So translate Z or Z and translate Z or Z. Right, so now they're in place. If we quickly test this, go to the drive control channel box. If we move that length, you can see that we're going the wrong way. Okay, so we can just double click that one and set that to subtract. There we go. 
So now when we adjust this, we have that stretch effect happening. That's cool. All right, let's move on to the next thing, which we're going to do, which is width. So as we move this, we want the, the wheels to be spreading apart. So we're going to grab the rear two joints now. And we're going to add those. We're going to connect our width adjust directly to our left joints because it's the same value. Our width adjust, plug that into our translate X. And the same thing with the left front one here as well. Put that in the translate X and close those ones down. So now we're going to add a multiply divide node. I'm just going to call this wheel MD. And this is just going to handle a whole bunch of invert calculations that we need to do. Just saves having a whole bunch of nodes. We're just going to use this one for three inverts instead throughout the tutorial. So this is our first one we're going to plug in here. We're going to grab the width adjust. And we're going to plug that directly into input 1x. Let's open this up. Move that out of the way. And we're going to make sure that the input 2 on all of these is just set to negative 1. And that's just going to invert the value. And then we're going to grab the value from here, our output x. And we're going to plug that into our translate x and our output x into our I'm not sure why that's not showing up. There we go. Our output x into our translate x. So now when we use our, let me close that down. When we use our width, we can see that the width grows now and we have our length working as well. Now we're pretty much ready to move on to the next part. So I'm just going to recap real quick, make sure we're all ready here. Uh, you want to make sure that your wheel adjust control works, your length adjust is working, and also the control hierarchy needs to be in this order specifically, or you're going to have some issues. So we want to make sure that our rear axis control moves our body control, because we still want to have our suspension available when we use that control. We also want to be able to move all of those controls when we move the front axis control, and we want everything to move with our drive control. So if everything looks good your end and it matches this, then you're ready to move on to part two. And in part two, we will be dealing with the drive control mainly. And of course, we'll be setting up our main steering control. So it's about to get a little bit more exciting than what we've done already. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.